What's up guys, it's Brian here. Today I'm bringing you guys another LEGO Star Wars 2022 set review, and we've got the highly anticipated Mandalorian N1 Starfighter. That's number 75325, contains 412 pieces, retails for 60 US dollars. So that price to piece ratio doesn't look very good. It has too many figures and too really many figures. And the box is pretty simple. There isn't a lot of, uh, or there aren't a lot of features to this set. But let's take a look at this build and see if that $60 price tag actually works. So here is the N1 Starfighter in all of its glory. We're going to take a look at the build first so that we can actually see exactly what this thing looks like and what it can do. It is a larger build than I anticipated. It feels like more than 412 pieces. It's got some, it's got a good little weight to it. So it's not as like flimsy and cheap as I thought it would be. It's not the best build in the whole world, but you know, it's a toy, it's a play set, you know? It's not exactly a collector's display piece, but I think it really does get the job done for the rough and rugged look of the Mandalorian's N1 fighter. It's got some good length to it because of the um, the little uh, back piece right here, which is kind of built in a funky way, but this is actually just a random detail that's kind of like that, but it's pretty cool. I like the way that it all comes together. My biggest complaint with the build is that this engine piece on the bottom breaks off very, very easily. You can see how that's put together. It's just a brick onto, some, onto a plate right there, and it sits on the ground flat on that engine piece so like it, it it gets loosened if you pick it up like this put it back down keep picking it up a couple times i was flying the ship around and it just came off right in my hand so that is very well that is very not well put together that wasn't phrased correctly but you know what i mean not very well built there we go but the rest of the set i think is okay um here's the main couple play features there is a spring-loaded shooter in the front that is integrated very well I really like the way that this is in there because it's very well hidden and the function to shoot it is very, uh, very fun to do. It's just this little, this little button up here. Oh, I didn't get the spring load shooter in all the way. There we go. This little button up here just kind of pushes down and makes the spring load shooter come out. And that's actually ve integrated very well. So I don't actually mind it. It's built using this little clip mechanism here. You can see exactly how that is. And that's just, that's the entirety of the build. And then when you push down the button, the little blue piece pushes down on the end of the spring-loaded shooter. And it's just kind of built like that very nicely. While, while I'm up there, I will mention there are three stickers in the set. Uh, so very nice that they don't have that many stickers. There's the spent sticker sheet. It's just this one, uh, one by three tile up here. And then two circle stickers, which I really, really hate because it's so hard to get them on straight. If you mess up, just like one degree, because it's 360 degrees of uh, margin of error. If you mess up just one degree of that, it's not totally straight. This one's not so bad, it's a little angled, but you can kind of tell that the, the sticker in the cockpit isn't exactly straight on there at all. And the rest of the detailing on this thing is pretty nice. I like all the greebling uh, in the engines. It looks very rough and rugged. It's slightly different on both sides, which is pretty nice. It's not completely repetitive, even though they are very similar builds. There are some slight differences, especially in the front of those engines. You can kind of see where those differences lie just a little bit. And then these details on the either side of the cockpit are different, which is nice. And that's pretty much it. You've got a little uh, storage space down here for Mando's gear, like his jetpack and the Darksaber. And then the two cockpits, obviously, which I know some people were complaining about the size of these cockpits, but like it's it fits the character's perfectly so clearly they like obviously the set is way too big for to be minifigure scale but knowing that minifigures aren't the proportion of actual people this is the best they can do with getting it as small as they can these cockpits are as small as they can be and then they built the ship around the minifigures which is just fine for me because they fit in the cockpit so well Great little grogu goes up there and he closes down you kind of have to move these around to get them to close perfectly this doesn't close unless you open up this one and then this kind of catches on the brick there and you got to close it up like that so not the easiest thing to close but also not the biggest deal in the world there's how the seat in the cockpit is built little headrest up there which is cool and look the engine broke off see happened in real time i did not break that off that just broke off on its own but we are going to and the cockpit broke off too this tends to come loose as well so again some of these features are a little touchy 
but we're going to try to get the uh, the uh, jetpack and the dark saber into the storage compartment, which is a little bit tricky. We have to make sure that you get them in just right so that the actual uh, lid fits on. I have them in there like this right now because you see that little plate kind of dips into the actual storage compartment. So we put this back on here and yep, we got it in there just fine. If you want to put anything else in there, probably not going to fit. But we got to get Mando in there and he sits in there just nice and snug like that. And there he is. And I just really love the look of this, of Mando and Grogu in the ship together. Yes, the ship is a little overscaled, but listen, it's fine. And it gets the job done for what it's supposed to be. So I think this build is kind of getting a bad rap, but obviously it's not great. It's, it's, a, it's a play set. But let's take a look at the minifigures. And then when we're done with the minifigures, I want to compare this set to the last $60 Starfighter that we got. But let's look at those minifigures first. And obviously the first two figures we get, or rather minifigure and very tiny minifigure, are not the new ones, they're Mando and Grogu. We've seen them before, they are pretty darn good. I still have my complaints about this figure and the helmet printing and the helmet color, but I'm getting over it. It's a really good figure. He does have his backpack. I wish he came with a cape, but it's not a big deal. The Darksaber does, is kind of pathetic, it doesn't really have a mold yet but the LEGO designers kind of implied that they might do a mold at some point because they did kind of uh, rush through the development of this set to get it out quickly. So it's nice to know that they are thinking about doing a Darksaber mold. The one thing that's new about this Din Djarin is obviously the face print. The face print looks very good. It, it's uh, Pedro Pascal's likeness. Uh, I, cap I think it captures it very well. But the biggest con for me with this is that it doesn't come with a hairpiece. There are a couple that you could probably pull from your collection that fit, this is the most common one that uh, gets the job done and looks pretty good. My favorite hairpiece to use for him, though, is actually this one. I think it captures the waviness of his hair a little bit better. And it just gives him a unique look because this hairpiece is used so much. Either one of these work pretty well. But the fact of the matter is they should have just put a hairpiece in this set. But regardless, I'm glad we got a face print for him finally. But those are the only, um, these are the figures that are not new or exclusive to this set. However, the ones that are new and exclusive to the set are Pelimoto and the BD droid. I forget what the designation of this BD droid is. I want to say it's like 72 or something. The BD droid mold is not exclusive, but the printing on him is because BD1 comes in the giant BD1 set. So two different BD droids are available on the market, or at least that summer set will be available. But Pelimoto is the one truly new and exclusive minifigure, like classic minifigure in this set. And she looks really good. I didn't think that this hairpiece would work as well as it does, but it really does just, it fits her personality so well. She does have two faces, one that's really happy and one that's, uh, what do you call it? A little happy. Usually that doesn't work for figures who are like soldiers. I don't like when they do female faces, like just happy, happy female soldier faces, but she's not a soldier. So it captures her personality very well. Torso print's very good. No leg printing. I wish they had gone with the mid legs to show that, to show her height a little better because she is shorter than Mando. And so I do wish that they gave her mid legs to capture her height a little better, but I am very happy that they gave her a belt. It just works for the figure so well. So all in all, I think this is a solid minifigure and a very good one to include in this set. I know I usually show the extra pieces, but I already put those away by accident, but I will show you the instruction manual because I really hate this. And this is something that I uh, am just kind of upset about because it's got just a really bland rendering on a generic background, and it doesn't make any sense why they didn't put the box art on this manual. I like saving LEGO instruction manuals because I get to actually keep the box art without keeping the whole box. So I'm very disappointed that LEGO decided to go with this very generic, very boring, and pretty bad rendering of the model itself. It really just looks like it came straight from Bricklink Studio uh, in, in like the lower render model set, model render settings. So not happy about this at all. Like I mentioned before, obviously the price of this set has been kind of a hot button issue. So I want to bring in the last $60 Starfighter that LEGO did. It happened to be a year ago when they released the Mandalorian Starfighter from the Clone Wars, the other Mandalorian Starfighter. This set was $60, this set is $60. This set has about 150 more pieces than this set. This one has three brand new and exclusive minifigures. 
this set has one exclusive traditional minifigure. So, where uh, can we compare these two sets? The builds, I think, are actually more comparable than you might think. They actually, even though this has way more pieces, they kind of feel similar in weight. This one is obviously a little bit lighter, but they're almost the same size. Obviously, the little stick at the end gives this a little bit more uh, length to it. This has just the wings that make it a little bit bigger, but they don't feel that different. They feel like they do actually belong in the same price range. However, what makes this set really worth the $60, at least I think, are the three brand new and highly desirable figures that came in this set last year. Whereas this one has a new face print, a new mold that's not even exclusive anymore, and one new and exclusive figure who can be improved, whereas I think these three figures are as close to perfect as you can possibly get. So I think build-wise... I think they, the builds belong in the same category, but where this set is seriously lacking is in the minifigures. I think that this set should have had one more minifigure instead of uh, trying to pass up these two characters as, like, figures or characters in this set. Because this is just one piece, and this is two little pieces. These aren't minifigures. They're, they're more like accessories if you want to get technical about it. So they should have had one more figure in this set, and I think that these two sets would have been more comparable. But I do think this this one is more worth $60 than this one, the old versus the new. Uh, that being said, how good is this set and which figures should have come in it to supplement that value? So like I just said, ultimately this set should have come with one more figure. I think for the purposes of the scene that this is kind of trying to recreate, Either, maybe even a pit droid or two would have uh, worked to be working on the ship. But as far as traditional minifigures go, Fennec would have been a pretty good fit because she does come in at the end of this episode and talk to Mando about the job. Or, and this is something that, I, that came to my head that I haven't seen suggested before, one of those um, New Republic pilots, like one of like whoever um, was policing the, uh, the, 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 the outer space when Mando was flying in space and then they were like, hey, did you used to fly a Razor Crest? And then he kind of just speeds away. I think one of those pilots could have been a really cool inclusion because it doesn't seem like we're probably going to get those pilots because we just got an, there's still an X-Wing on the market right now. So it's not like they're going to make an X-Wing with New Republic pilots anytime soon. That could have been a cool way to throw in one of those um, new characters into this scene. And it would have just been funny because those scenes are always fun with the, uh, the New Republic cops, as they call them. But all in all, I, this set definitely is not perfect. It definitely has its weaknesses. Mando is not bald. Um, the engine falls off the bottom. It should have had one more figure. But overall, it's not as bad as people are talking about. Um, I really wanted it personally. I knew I could not wait for it. As soon as the moment, the moment I saw this ship on screen, I knew I wanted it as a Lego set. So for me, $60 was fine. If you feel the same way, I don't think you're gonna be, you're gonna go wrong with it. The build did surprise me. I was expecting to come in and say, I wish I hadn't paid $60 for this. This does not feel like $60 worth of stuff. But the build is larger than I thought it would be. It doesn't feel like 412 pieces. It feels like more than that. The figures is where it kind of lacks a little bit because they really should have had one more. But overall, it's not so bad. And I'm very excited to put it on display next to my other uh, Mandalorian slash uh, Book of Boba Fett sets or whatever else comes out from the Disney Plus uh, MCU Star Wars that, they're, that they've been crafting. So it, it's going to be an iconic ship for Mando Season 3. It will be essential to get when it goes down in price. Even though it's actually going up in price to $65, I forgot about that completely because LEGO was increasing their prices because they've been eating production costs recently and, you know, issues with the supply chain, blah, blah, blah. This set's going to go up to $65 later this year. So actually, you should get it while it's $60. I'm going to retract what I just said about, about waiting for it to go on sale. It's going to go up in price. <laughs> and I can't believe I'm even saying this. 65 is ridiculous. So if you can get this thing for 60, you should get it for 60 before it goes up in price. Man, what a world we're living in right now. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching this review. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed. If you're not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. And that's going to just about do it. Thanks again for watching. This has been Brian from Watermelon Studios. Peace out, guys.